Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Ladies and gents, you just had the trailer for Seven Bloodstained Orchids. This is disc number 59 in the 88 Films Italian Collection series. On the website, it says thusly, Six women are dead, murdered by a madman known as the Half Moon Killer. Guilla Torresi, played by Ulchi Glass of The Gorilla of Soho and The Body in the Thames, came close to being victim number seven. When she recovers, her fiancé Mario, played by Antonio Sabato, of Grand Prix and Gang War in Milan sets out to snare the psycho and realises that the murders might not be as random as the police think. From the master director Umberto Lenzi of Eyeball and Spasmo fame comes a prime slice of giallo action with a careful plot, ten set pieces and outrageous violence. The black glove killer makes inventive use of power tools, lead piping and even a phone. Now restored to its original bloody beauty and completely uncut, 88 Films are proud to present the first ever UK release of one of Lenzi's most audacious movies. 
The special features on here is a brand new 2K remaster from the original 35mm negatives and 235 1 aspect ratio. We have a remastered uncompressed English audio, remastered uncompressed Italian audio with newly translated subtitles, an audio commentary by Giallo experts Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson. Uh, we have Blood Flowers, an interview with director Umberto Lenzi. Killed by Death, an interview with actress Gabriella Giorgelli. Um, reversible sleeve with Italian, uh, with alternative Italian poster. Uh, this is region unlocked. The audio is DTS HD MA dual mono. Picture is HD 1080p 235.1. Runtime is about an hour and 35 minutes. Languages are both English and Italian with English subtitles. So yeah, I'd seen this one a while ago, and I was kind of looking forward to revisiting. It's a movie where the name might be recognisable, but when it comes to, like, Lindsay's involvement in Giallo in general, people will always opt to talk about specifically Eyeball because of its masterclass and sleaze. Um, but, you know, when you're when you're talking about his stuff, it's hard not to mention something like Spasmo, which is genuinely a fucking incredible work. And we've spoken about this before, most recently, in the series when talking about Lindsay, who's a guy who, I mean is sometimes unfairly and then sometimes fairly pigeonholed as a very schlocky, um, opportunistic director is probably the best way to describe it in that he uh, rode the coattails of what many other directors were doing and basically did versions of their movies uh, successfully. And it's a fair thing to say on certain movies, but he was making giallos before giallos were popular. And at the same time, even when he's leaning into the tropes and stuff, he's a fucking hell of a director. And Seven Bloodstained Orchids is a great example of that. This movie is beautifully shot. I mean, absolutely beautifully shot. And it's an interesting, well put together movie. Now, as Jallos go, and even from his own back catalogue, this isn't one where it's... I mean, I love the you know the description in the, the old uh, 88 film thing about Lindsay's most audacious movies. It's not anywhere near that. I think it's actually surprisingly reserved for a Lindsay movie. It, the deaths are cool and fun and creative for sure, but they're nowhere near as exploitative as something like Eyeball, which is very much like beyond the line to the point that you can't see the line of acceptability. Um, on top of that as well, it has a very grounded this is a giallo style story. The the you know the seven murders. Uh, that are being linked up here from our killer being derived to uh, you know a, a hotel stay where the seven victims all stayed there and something must have happened and we need to work out who the killer is in time is it feels very conventional once again very Agatha Christie which I enjoy those are my favourite sort of giallos are the ones that feel like they've just come straight from the pages of a pulpy crime novel so this movie has that you know ripping ripping out everywhere I think that works surprisingly well. I think the acting's really good. I, I enjoy the acting in this one. Sometimes when you're watching movies of this ilk, the acting can be a bit twee or a bit, let's not try and mince a word here, shit. Um, and you don't get that here. Some Bloodstained Orchids, everyone is performing relatively well. Uh, the, the deaths are nowhere near as gratuitous as you think they will be with Lindsay behind it, but they serve the plot. It's a very fun, quirky little movie as well, so this is one of these ones that doesn't exist in the top tier of Jallos, but is by nowhere near your kind of run-of-the-mill trashy Jallo. It kind of has a bit of class about it, a bit of uh, joie de vie, so to speak, and it has a specific pacing which works very well for it the the plot unfolds in a way where you're never at any point thinking oh why is this taking so long or wait one second I missed that detail it is very deliberate and as a result you're walked through the crime now if you're me uh, and you watched it for the first time you're probably going to guess the killer um, before the reveal that being said though I don't think it's overtly obvious and I, I like that as well it just, it, it does what it needs to do. And even even the end of this movie is fun. Um, this is one of these ones where we, we lean right back into the tropes of the Jallo killer as well. So, you know, he's wearing the black the coat, he's got the black hat, uh, black gloves. So this is the, the, the kind of, the, the stereotype of the Giallo killer, which I enjoy. Once again, I like those details. It, it fits in with the genre. We move away from it a lot 
in the in the subgenre throughout the seventies, but this one has that grounding in there, and it works quite well, quite well for me. But he's in the kind of grand traditions of Argento. He's a very particularly playful killer in that he likes tormenting and taunting his victims. And you think something like Bird, Bird with the Crystal Plumage or even Cat and Nine Tails, along those lines, where we have a killer who's really four flies and grey velvet as well, where our, our killer is almost poking at his victims as part of the game. It's part of why he's getting off, and it works really well in here. Um, it's got a beautiful score. I, I think it sits wonderful in the background. And like I say, it's, it's wonderfully shot. Like him or loathe him, Umberto Lenzi is a great director. And even with the most kind of crass, uh, banal, or at times outrageous content, he approaches things with a, a meticulous eye for detail. Um, mostly because he's zooming in on eyes and faces. And there's plenty of zoom shots in this one that you know does my heart well. But it's just, I think it's just a... a a kind of great testament to an incredible director who really you can tell he did a lot of these movies that uh, this may have just been a paycheck for him but it doesn't mean that he directed it just like a paycheck there there is a tension there's enough little quirks in here enough little twists and turns which to me make me feel like his personality is coming out throughout this and that works for me it's I mean, if you what's what's interesting about Blood, Seven Blood Stain Orchids is if you were trying to get someone into Jallo, this could be one that you would use. I don't think it's the best example of kind of nuts and bolts Jally cinema by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it feels like you could use this as a, a nice progressional tool, moving off the back of something like a Bird with a Crystal Plumage. You're not gonna like find that you've you've come on leaps and bounds from the core of the genre but at the same time it didn't make any egregious mistakes that would make you question why you're watching movies within the subgenre. So I think it's there's a fine balance in act here and Lenzi nails it really, really well. I think sometimes we overlook and we think of the you know, like Cannibal Ferox and those sort of movies that are associated with the Lenzi name and forget how great he was at just doing core Italian genre movies and yeah Seven Bloodstained Orchids is great and the print is bloody gorgeous for this one so 2 key restoration love it um, the the commentary once again I, I don't always watch movies fully with commentary I'll tend to switch them on and off uh, just to hear what kind of conversations are happening and our old buddy Troy uh, and Nathaniel are a great combo and the last couple of releases with them on them have been great testaments to that. They know their stuff and they're quite fun when they're chatting about it. Uh, you get an interview with uh, Umberto Lenzi prior to his death, which is interesting to, to hear. It's a very cynical, very dry wit, which I enjoy. And the interview with Gabriella is, is good as well. I, I enjoyed it. It's not like bursting at the seams with special content, but I'm just happy that I have this one and a great print. That to me is enough to get me going and get me happy with it. It's one of those ones that it's just another giallo in the collection that makes me happy. So not not a, a bad movie, not an exceptional movie, well above average. Um, I, I really enjoyed coming back to this one. In terms of grades, it's a 3.5. I, I, I have a lot of fun with it. It's one of those ones where I feel if I was wanting a, like, to run a giallo week in the house, I could very, very easily just pick up Seven Bloods the Orchids slide in there and uh, I would be happy uh, for sure and I think that's harder than it sounds there's a, there's a lot of just very boring jallos that came out in this time period and Lenzi in doing nothing remarkable in this movie still makes this movie instantly engaging and fun to watch so there we go 3.5 out of 5 for 7 blood stained orchids